My next guest takes on Hacker and Diaz coming up here at UFC Fight Night 119 on October 28th. It's Jared Gordon joining me here on the program for the very first time. Jared, how are you? I'm doing well, James. How are you doing? Doing very well. Appreciate you taking the time. And uh, it's the first time I've had you on the show, so I kind of want to get to know you, get to, get to know the backstory and all that. And I know you uh, grew up in uh, Queens, New York. How did you get involved in combat sports? Uh, well, I wrestled and boxed as a kid. And um, I graduated from high school, and I was pretty directionless. And um, I knew I, at the time UFC was, like, blowing up. And uh, the Ultimate Fighter was on, and I remember like watching, and I was like, "Geez, I would love to do this." And I knew that I wanted to do something physical, and uh, you know, for just fitness and stuff. And you know, I wrestled, like I said, in box, so I was already had a knack for that. And uh, one day, I, I came out of the subway here in Queens, and I looked up, and uh, there was a an MMA school. It's called Combined Martial Arts, and it was uh, the home of the Rhino Fight Team. So. I walked in there, I started doing jiu-jitsu and boxing again, and uh, I fell in love with it. And within four months, I had my first amateur fight. Very cool. How is that transition going from wrestling to MMA? Because, of course, wrestling's uh, probably the best base you could have for, for getting into mixed martial arts. Um, it was pretty easy. I mean, you know, like, I actually only wrestled, I only wrestled for a little bit in middle school, and then I moved to Queens. <laughs> Wrestling is huge in Long Island. When I moved to the city, there was no wrestling here. Now it's pretty big. But so when I jumped into jiu-jitsu, I mean, I still, you know, I had that wrestler base, I guess you could call it. And uh, and I just rolled right into it. It was like I fell in love with jiu-jitsu, actually. And it was pretty easy for me to transition to it. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I remember being a kid and just thinking, like, wow, this is – this is dream come true. <laughs> Excellent. Now that you're in the UFC, are you a full-time fighter or do you have a job on the side that sort of pays the bills and everything? Um, no, I'm a full-time fighter. I still live in uh, my father, my father's house, so I don't have to pay rent. And here in New York, it's very expensive. Um, my mother's uh, Italian, so she cooks. So I get to eat for free a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. Um, I do work in a, in a Henzo Gracie gym here in Queens, but, um, you know, it's basically my life. Anyway, it's basically fighting. Anyways, I'm teaching an MMA class. So, I mean, uh, it's not like I'm working a nine to five at some desk somewhere. Exactly. And that's a lot better. At least they go hand in hand. It's not like you're, you know, running into the office, trying to get changed, trying to, you know, get ready for training and everything. So, so I think uh, that that's really cool. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to tell me about rent. Cause so I, I live in Toronto, Canada and uh, Toronto is like the New York of Canada. Like everything's overpriced. Everything's really expensive. So when you're talking about the rent, it's like, I know exactly what you mean. Like a one bedroom's like, you know, $2,000 a month or something yeah. crazy like that. Right. So it's uh it's crazy. I don't know how they get away with it, but uh, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, let's talk about your UFC debut, man. Uh, couldn't have gone any better, in my opinion. You get the uh, the first, uh, sorry, the second round uh, knockout over uh, Michael uh, Mitchell Quinones. Um, could that? How happy were you with your performance in that fight, especially getting the finish? Um, it was definitely what you know we planned on, and I think his style, like you know, it was perfect for my style. It just fed right into to my style and. Uh, you know, I had some unfortunate events happen with missing weight and then getting sick at UFC 211. So I definitely needed an exciting performance like that. And I definitely needed a win and probably a finish. Uh, so it couldn't have gotten any better as far as the fight went. And uh, yeah, I'm, I was stoked for sure. And, you know, how, how much did you sort of prove to yourself? Because you mentioned, you know, going into the fight sick, you had to deal with all these things. The fact that you were not only able to just get the win, but to get the finish as well, dealing with all of that. Um, you know, I went to UFC 211. It was a huge card. Biggest one of the year thus far at that point. And uh, I got sick. They, they deemed me unfit to fight. I couldn't fight. I was, like, devastated. You know, I finally got there, and I get sick, and I can't fight. So... I moped around for about a week, and then I was like, all right, well, I've been through way worse, so time to pick myself up and, you know, get back to the grind. Um, I went to the UFC athlete retreat, and two days after that, I got the call that I was fighting Mitchell again at, uh, in Oklahoma. So I had four weeks to prepare. I got on the scale. I was 178, so I was 32 pounds over the limit. So I was like, oh, shit. Excuse my language. But... <laughs> no, no, swear away. I may be um, Canadian, but you can swear away. It's all good. Okay, cool. So 
I hired a nutritionist, cost me close to $3,000. I did everything they told me to do. I tried my hardest. I trained as hard as I ever trained. And I got down to 149 and it just wouldn't, wouldn't come off anymore. It just stopped, stopped sweating. And, and, uh, it was the first time I ever missed weight. So it was pretty devastating to finally get to UFC, have that event in Dallas happen, then miss weight. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, it's fitting for me. Like, this is the kind of stuff that happens for me, to me. But, uh, I remember my coach was like, well, you better, you better kick this guy's ass. Cause if you lose, they might just say, see you later, you know? So, um, the fight couldn't have gotten any better. Okay. Excellent. Definitely happy. Now, with, with all that said, with the weight cutting and all that, uh, you're going down to Brazil for this fight. Um, I imagine, you know, the travel time and everything like that. Like, are you going to try and cut as much weight as you can in the U.S. before you head down there, or are you going to try and do it while you're in Brazil? Well, we're still – we're get, we're leaving Monday morning, so we get there Tuesday, We go to the fight. Um, I mean, at that point, next week, it's all water from there. So I'll still be doing my, like, water load and drinking all the water, so – I mean, I'm going to be doing as much sweating and fat burning that I can while I'm here. But uh, it's really those last couple of days where I'm going to have to get the weight off. Luckily, this fight's actually at 155. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, of course. So okay. I'm not having to completely die to get to 45. Um, and I'm lucky, though, because my wrestling coach, who will be down there cornering me, is Damien Maya's wrestling coach. So... I have a place to go, a gym to go to. I know Damien. I know his teammates and his manager, and they they uh, lend a hand, and they said anything I need, we can fight, let them know, and they'll help me out. So we're not going down there completely blind, which was a breath of fresh air. You know, I've never been to Brazil. So uh, that was a plus for me for sure. So uh, I think I'll be all right, though. I made 55 without having to get in the sauna before, so I should uh, – should be should be all right. Is this your first time? Uh, this is your first time going down to Brazil, is it? My first time in Brazil. I've been to Venezuela. I've been to Colombia. I've been to Belize. I was in Mexico three times. So I've been around, been around the block. First time in Brazil, though. Pretty excited. Excellent. And I guess having that coach as well will kind of ease things out because I know sometimes fighters when they go down to Brazil they don't have an idea of you know what's around them as far as resources and all that. But it sounds like you've got that all mapped out with uh, Damian Maia's uh, coach. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, really fortunate for that. Definitely, you know, it's pretty, pretty big, pretty big there. I'd say so. Uh, and you're taking on Hacker and Diaz. He's got the 23 five and one record. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? I think it's a perfect matchup. I think it's, uh, you know, he's a 145er coming up to 55 as well. So I'm not fighting some uh, six foot three guy, you know, but uh, I think his style plays perfectly into mine. He, he. He's very hittable and he's very uh, predictable. He had, I, I don't think he's evolved much uh, over his career. And, uh, you know, for me, I feel like it's everything to gain. And for him, it's everything to lose. He's coming off a two-fight two losing streak. So for him, it's it seems like it's probably do or die. Um, for me, obviously, it's do or die as well. But, um, you know, I'm the, the quote-unquote prospect i guess you could say and he's like the veteran so um i think everything i think the pressure's on him he's in his home country you know i'm not phased by people and booing and cheering i i truly believe that i uh you know i perform under pressure and and that's what i've done in and out of the cage is perform under pressure so i think uh his style is perfect for mine Excellent. And as far as training camp, uh, who are some of the, the guys that are helping you get ready for this fight as far as training partners? Um, well, as far as training partners, um, I have uh, – I'm, I'm, I'm in uh, Church Street Boxing, which is a big boxing gym in New York City. Uh, I have a lot – I spar with a lot of pro boxers. Uh, Skender Halili is one of my main sparring partners. I spar with him today. He's actually fighting this week in Newark. He's 14-2, uh, and two, and he's got 13 knockouts out of 14 wins. So – He's a, he's a great boxer, great uh, teammate of mine. Um, Sydney, my buddy Sydney, he's a pro boxer as well. He's been helping me a lot. I do a lot of boxing. Um, but I, I also go to Henzo Gracie's, and uh, I have uh, Joao Zafarino there. He's in uh, the Pro Fight League. Um, Emmanuel Wallow, he's uh, 
a big prospect coming up. I think he's 12 and two or 13 and two. Uh, I trained with Neiman Gracie, trained with all the guys, at, you know, at Gracie. Dave Branch is a teammate of mine. Uh, Sapo, Rafael Natal, he just retired, but he uh, helps, you know, run the room and watch us spar. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that are, are not known there too that are good. And uh, there's a there's a guy I know uh, pretty well up here in Canada, Shlomino Rama. I uh, trains with oh, yes. the guys, right? Yeah, Shlomino's a teammate of mine as well. Forgot to mention he'd be pissed off. I was actually <laughs> talking to him yesterday. He's a great guy. I mean, he's a he's he's bigger than me, but we do wrestle and do jiu-jitsu together. So. Um, I'm there. I'm also at Edge Hobogan, which is uh, where I wrestle. Uh, a lot. We all train basically in the same spots. We go gym to gym. So a lot of the guys I mentioned are there as well. But I have Damien Lyons, wrestling coach, and they also help out Frank Yeager. Uh, David Esposito is the coach there. Well, my, my coach's name is Cody Hamra. Uh, my head coach is Jason Strout. He's out of Church Street Boxing. And uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, MMA grappling coach, is uh, Michael Jaramillo. He's a uh, John Danaher's first black belt, and he's been around the block for a long time. So, got a pretty good team. How do you see this fight ending on October twenty eighth? Um, I don't see it going three rounds. Uh, I think I'm I think I'll finish him in the second or third. Uh, we talked all about your fight career and everything like that. What do you like doing on your downtime? And, and more specifically, what are you going to do on the plane when you head over to Brazil? Are you going to try and sleep? Are you going to listen to a podcast? Going to put on a movie? What would I find you doing? Uh, as far as the plane ride, I'll, I'll probably watch a couple movies. Um, thankfully, the flight's uh, overnight flight, so oh, cool. I should okay. be oh, tired. Cool. So hopefully, I'll get some. Hopefully, I'll get some shut eye. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I want to sleep for sure because the next day I'm definitely gonna have to work out. But um, on my downtime, you know, this is a great question because people ask me this all the time. What do you do? And I'm like, I train. They're like, No, that, that's your job. What else you do? I'm like, I watch fights. And they're, they're like, no, that's part of your job. And I'm like, that's, you know, I need, I need hobbies, man. Because like, sometimes I get like stuck up here and, uh, I need to unwind. But, um, I do like going to watch movies. I was actually, I used to be huge into, uh, inline skating. So I was thinking I was, gonna, I was talking to my friend, I think I'm actually going to buy a pair of skates and do that. But, uh, man, on my downtime when I'm fighting, or if I have a fight camp, I'm so tired. I'll just sit around my house and do nothing, and I'm happy doing that. But uh, fighting takes up like 95% of my life, man. No, I, I believe it. If you eat, breathe, uh, I mean, it, this uh, it takes a special type of person to be a fighter, and I think you got to yeah. have that right mindset. So I think I think that's great that you know you're watching fights, you're training, you're obsessed with it, and that's how you kind of have to be in this uh, in this in this game, right? Correct. One thing I am involved in though is. Uh, you know, being on a recovering addict is that I do, I am involved in the recovery community. So, you know, I, I go to meetings and, you know, I have to stay on top of that. Otherwise I might end up like in the projects in Harlem or something, you know? So right. okay. I got <laughs> to watch, watch where I'm going and stuff. Yeah, fair, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, it's good, and I'm sure it puts things in perspective when you go to stuff like that, kind of, you know, really uh, makes you appreciate the, the life that you have and, and everything like that and, and what you've, you know, been able to overcome and everything. Yeah, for sure, 100%. Excellent. Well, everyone's got to check out this fight. It's UFC Fight Night 119 coming up here October 28th. Jared, this is a lot of fun. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, where can people get a hold of you on social media? If you've got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. Um, on uh, Twitter, it's J Flash Gordon MMA. And on uh, Instagram, Jared Flash Gordon. And a uh, huge shout out to my sponsors, John Brescia at Lombardi's Pizza. Eat Clean Bro in New Jersey. They've uh, helped me out with uh, my, my meals for this camp. And a uh, big shout-out to Sucker Punch Entertainment, my management, and 